Hi everyone, my name is Les Picker. Uh, I'm a professional wildlife, landscape, and travel photographer. I've been shooting full frame and medium format for more than five decades, believe it or not. And um, uh, I've recently gone to using this uh, Fuji GFXS system. And I'd like to talk with you today about what I love about it, why I love it, and uh, even some of the things that I don't like about the camera. And with that, let's get right into it. I should tell you I'm not a, uh, I don't do bench tests, I'm not really a technical reviewer. What matters for me is how the camera works in the field uh, through extreme weather. Uh, and if a camera works for me, that's what I look for, period. Okay, so with that, let's move on. And what I'd like to start with is talking about the file system uh, in the Fuji GFX 50S. Look, you're not going to go into medium format for the, because the camera is light, because it has 52 lenses to choose from. Um, you know, that, that's almost irrelevant. If you're going to shoot medium format, then you are the kind of serious um, advanced amateur or pro photographer who really values the best image that you can possibly get. And the files in this GFX 50 are truly beyond belief. They are, uh, we, we're dealing with uh, 50 megapixel files, so there's plenty of room for enlargements, for, uh, for uh, cropping if need be. Uh, but the, the thing is that the gradation, the color gradations in, the, in these files are absolutely amazing. You don't have that, that digital look, if you will. It's almost a film-like, beautiful gradation in color and in tonality that happens in these files. The, um, the other thing is the, the crazy amount of um, uh, latitude that you have in, in, in your images. So that your, your, um, we're talking about 15 stops of, of latitude that you're able to have with this camera. And, as a result, you can pull detail out of shadows uh, very easily, and, and that, that really helps uh, in, in my photography, at least, I know. So as far as uh, the files go, I think you'll, you'll see that there's, there's really no equal to medium format, of course, large format, but uh, in medium format, something that, that has some degree of portability, the, uh, the Fuji GFX just is a terrific camera overall. Next, let's talk about uh, how this camera handles. Let's face it, this is not a light camera to begin with. Uh, when you put on some of these uh, long lenses and you're hand holding, this camera can be quite heavy, the camera plus the lens. But what I find is that the handling of this camera, the comfort, the feel of the camera is really quite extraordinary. You'll notice that there's a very deep grip here and I've been walking the streets of Myanmar, I've been th in different places in African villages, and I find I can hold this camera the entire day and without any fatigue because it just has such a stable feel to it. Um, that grip is, is really quite amazing. Uh, and I've used Nikons throughout my life, and those are good grips too, but, but with a camera that is, has, is this substantial in weight, you want to make sure that the grip is really good. My fingers don't slip off, they, they grip it uh, solidly. And the other thing about the, the uh, handling of this camera is that all the buttons that you'll ever need for this camera are so conveniently placed that I find I never lose the intimacy that I love to have with my camera so that I don't have to leave the uh, space, my, my photography space, in order to look for buttons and so on. Everything is accessible either from the front command dial or the shutter button or other buttons that are on top of the camera, easily accessible, and on the rear, Everything on the rear of the camera is accessible uh, through your thumb. So I find that to be very, very uh, easy to use uh, and, and the feel of the camera just, just works together. I do spend most of my time on landscape photography on a tripod. But when I'm shooting street photography, people photography, uh, travel photography, I find that the, uh, 
comfort and the feel and the handling of the camera are quite important. So, for example, on the buttons, I often want to quickly change the film type. So when I shoot in black and white, I like to actually see through the viewfinder what the scene looks like in black and white. So just by a sheer press of the button with my finger on the front of the camera, I can switch and, and then using the command dial, quickly switch from perhaps uh, the standard color palette to uh, Velvia or whatever, and then I can switch over to black and white very easily. If I want to go from mechanical shutter to electronic shutter, it's just a, qu a question of my pressing my thumb, uh, a quick turn of the dial, the front command or the rear command dial, and it's done. So I'll talk at some future point about how I personally set up my GFX, uh, so if you want to stay tuned for a future YouTube, but suffice it to say that the ergonomics of this thing are, are quite extraordinary. And um, to be perfectly honest, folks, I, I actually have arthritis in my hands. And if I can say that holding this thing uh, is, is easy and comfortable, that, that's really saying something. As I shoot very often in very cold weather conditions, so we're talking about past the Arctic Circle, uh, being out at night shooting the Northern Lights. One time I did that at minus 40 degree temperatures for five hours straight. Uh, I was recently in the Antarctic, uh, where the temperatures were quite cold. And the point is that there are times when you'll need to use gloves. Now, I'm, make no mistake here, I am, no camera is perfect with gloves on, none. But I do use a, a combination of light gloves uh, and then mittens over them. And I actually, again, be doing a YouTube uh, video on the kind of protection I use uh, using the glove mitten combination. But suffice it to say, I simply remove the mitten and with a light glove, I can easily manipulate the dials another, and, and press the buttons and, and, and run the, sh the shutter button. So it's all, uh, again, uh, the handling of this thing seems to be, for my needs anyway, if you're a landscape, travel, uh, and even with static wildlife, uh, you, can, you can really uh, th this is really a testimony to this camera. Next thing I'd like to talk about here are the screens, if you will, the screen view viewfinder combination on the GFX 50S. The, um, the uh, rear screen is similar to many cameras that you're used to in the, in the um, full frame uh, venues. And you know, it, it, you have full tilting in, in every direction. And when you're shooting on, um, when you're shooting vertically, you can also tilt the screen this way. So, if you're mounted on a tripod, that works very well. It's also a touchscreen. Double tap enlarges to 100%. You can move your images around. You can have access to your Q system, which is uh, a, an abbreviated menu system, by simply using the touchscreen also. So that comes in handy if you're tripod mounted. You're shooting landscapes. Uh, you just have to, you don't have to go to your buttons on top of your camera, especially if you're shooting it up high. You can just move your screen down, double tap it, and review your images, if you will. But the killer feature in this camera, I have to say, is this articulated viewfinder. Uh, by a simple twist of the button here, this thing will go to any position. And let me tell you how, how useful this is. As a landscape photographer also, you all know that you're going to be shooting oftentimes from low vantage points. You want a foreground object in your, in your view. Uh, you might be photographing plants or, or small animals. Uh, and having this ability to just look down rather than having to lie on your stomach is really a, a, a tremendous feature that I think you'll enjoy with this uh, viewfinder. Uh, also. I find that even shooting people, when, I'm in, when I was in Cuba, for example, recently, I, I did a lot of people photography, and I find, as I think you would too, rather than having your a typical thing here and you have to stand there like this shooting, when you have this uh, articulated viewfinder, you can keep this right, get a nice, tight, stable platform for your people photography, and 
you're constantly looking up, engaging with the people. So you don't have to bring down your camera, talk to them, have this be a barrier. All you have is the eyepiece here and you're looking up and talking to the folks. And I find that they find it a lot easier to be, uh, and you get more intimate shots, if you will, that way. So this uh, uh, viewfinder, you can also, it has a diopter in it. It's an option, by the way, it doesn't come with the camera. But I must say, I do not consider it an option. This is an absolute requirement for me. I'll never go back to uh, cameras that don't have this kind of viewfinder because frankly, it makes my job so much easier. And the viewfinder locks in any position, so it it's, doesn't move. It also has a great feature in that uh, when, when you're shooting vertically, you just tilt that viewfinder up and there it is. So it really is a, a nifty feature. I would encourage you, if you're going to go with the GFX, to make sure to order this uh, with, with the camera. You'll, you'll thank me for that. Let's talk about the menu system now on, on the um, Fuji. And I have to say, the menu system, being an, a mirrorless camera, uh, you can access the menu system through the buttons while you're looking through the EVF or you can locate them and manipulate your menu system through the touchscreen in the back. I find the touchscreen is like any other camera, uh, no problem, it works well, but I tend to like to stick, as I mentioned before, I like to stick with the viewfinder while I'm photographing, and I find that I access the menu system much more through the EVF while I'm looking through it, and then I just use the button systems to the button system to uh, go through the menu items that I need. I have to say that, you know, I've been using Nikon for over 50 years and, uh, you know, I've always loved my Nikons and I love the work it does, but the menu system is fairly complicated. Not so with the Fuji. I find that the, this GFX works, uh, it, the, the menu system is very intuitive. You get to the things you need very easily. Uh, Fuji's proprietary Q system is really excellent. It gets you to uh, the buttons that you need and, and the choices you need very quickly, and um, it just works. So for me, the menu system on the Fuji is terrific, uh, I, and that is a, another plus in my mind for this camera. Okay, let's talk lenses right now for the Fuji GFX 50S system, but also for the new 50R system. Those lenses can work either way. There, there's no such thing as a bad lens for the Fuji medium format system. They are absolutely fantastic. Edge to edge sharpness, it's there, it's there. Uh, crystal clarity, the, and the lens choices, the, their roadmap for uh, lenses, plus the ones that have already come out, are, is really wonderful. So let me tell you about the ones that I use right now. I have mounted on the camera the 23 millimeter, which is about a 17 millimeter in, uh, full, in full frame format, if you're using a, a Nikon or Canon or whatever. Uh, so this is the 23. I also use this lens, I'm going to say, well, certainly when I'm doing my travel photography, 80 to 90% of the time I mount this lens. It's a 32 to 64 uh, millimeter on the medium format, so it's similar to a 24 to 50. A great walk around lens. It's fairly light compared to some of the other lenses. Very well balanced, very quick focusing. Another aspect of the Fuji system that I like is that uh, you'll find that it's, it's very fast focusing. I'm not saying for wildlife or for fast movement if you're shooting cars or racetracks, but for most circumstances, the, the uh, focus system is, is quick and, and very accurate. So I use this 32 to 64. I have the uh, 120 macro, which is, uh, again, a stupendous lens. It's great for portraits because it's equal to about a 90 in, the, in, uh, in 35 millimeter format, in full frame format. Uh, so this is the 120 macro, but it also allows me to go very, very close uh, to objects if, I'm, if I want to switch to macro photography. My latest edition is the uh, 250 millimeter 
lens here, which would be equivalent to about 200 millimeter in uh, full frame format. This, uh, this is another exceptional lens. I, I, I just love it. It, uh, it seems like it's weighty, but the amazing thing with the Fuji is that it actually balances well. The camera and the lenses balance well. Uh, you can hold it uh, in a very stable position. And again, this uh, articulated viewfinder allows me to hold it in stable to my body, even though I'm using a, a fairly heavy 250 millimeter lens. I can um, I can track the uh, my subjects very easily with it. So I was recently in the Antarctic, for example, and I shot penguins, uh, seals, um, whales, and so on using this 250 millimeter lens. Very very good because you can get close to the, fairly close to the animals in the Antarctic. So uh, the reach of a 200 millimeter lens was uh, in, in full frame equivalent was more than adequate. Uh, for landscapes in the Antarctic and other places throughout the world, uh, I, I do lead tours, uh, photographic tours throughout the world. I find that, that the 32 to 64 is great not just for a walk around travel lens, but also for landscapes. It works very well. You can frame it uh, in camera. Uh, that, that also uh, works well. And this 23 millimeter is a huge addition to the Fuji lineup because you get uh, really great landscape shots if you're looking for, uh, for to encompass a, a large area. So that's, a, that's the lens system. Uh, Fuji does have a few other lenses out but they are planning other lenses in the future. I'm going to talk a little bit more about what I'd like to see in lenses uh, at the end of this video. So far we've talked about various features in the camera, the, the incredible lens selection, this killer feature of this articulated uh, viewfinder, which I absolutely love. Uh, the, this, the, the system is so customizable, it's really quite incredible. One other thing I want to talk about in terms of the customization of this camera is this top LCD screen. It may sound like may not sound like much. Lots of camera systems have the a top LCD. What differentiates this in my mind, and I've had other camera systems, is first of all the readability of the top LCD screen. It's bright, there are the numbers are large enough so that you can see it at a quick glance. But the key thing for me is that it's entirely customizable. So for example, on my I, I like to have here the shutter speed, the f-stop, uh, whether I have any exposure compensation dialed in. I know the ISO is reflected here in large, in large enough to see at a glance. I know I'm shooting in manual, raw. Uh, I, it tells me my white balance is on auto, and I'm shooting right now uh, Velvia film. So, I mean, the, it's emulating Velvia film. So, everything is there that I need at a glance, which again, it's, it's the interoperability of the whole system. I can either look at it through my EVF, I can look at it through my touch screen in the back, but also this little extra allows me just to quickly check my settings here, uh, especially if I'm away from the camera and I give a quick look and I see everything is where I need to be. Tied in with all of, all of the, what I think is excellent planning in this camera, and excuse me if I go overboard with it, but this has really become my go-to camera for landscape and uh, travel photography. The um, weatherproofing of this camera is really excellent. I've had this in snow in the Antarctic. I've had it uh, up in the, in the, in the uh, Arctic uh, circle uh, rain, in rain. I've had this in, in extreme heat. I've had it in jungle environments where the humidity is so high, it's really tightly weather sealed. I don't have to worry about it when I'm out shooting. And that's, remember I said at the beginning, I, I don't, I'm not a technical reviewer. What matters for me is how my camera uh, bonds with me, if you will, and how well it works in the field. And I don't have to overthink things. Is the camera going to do this? How do I get to the menu system to change this? Everything works together, and it's inter the, what I call interoperability is really quite excellent. So that is something uh, also that I think uh, really sells this camera. So far we've talked about all the positive things about the Fuji GFX-S. 
uh, I will now talk about things that I hate about this camera. Maybe not hate, but I, things I don't like and things that I think could be improved. Number one on the list, of course, is the frame rate. Uh, this is a medium format camera. Medium format cameras are not fast. You don't get a high frame rate like you have with Canon or Nikon or so many of these other brands uh, shooting 8, 10, 12 frames a second and, or more. Uh, we're limited to three frames a second on this. So if I'm shooting wildlife, uh, I turn to my Nikon D850 and with a fast frame rate and I'm, I'm a happy camper. Uh, I do wish though that there, were, there was a faster frame rate here and I, but I still use this camera for uh, re relatively sedentary wildlife. So if I see an elephant standing or whatever, I, uh, other animals that are maybe a leopard in a tree, I will turn to this camera because I love the quality of the files that we uh, talked about earlier. Any medium format camera is going to use up a ba batteries quicker than you will with your uh, typical 35 millimeter full frame cameras. This, with this camera, I get maybe 300 shots out of, a, uh, out of a battery. If it's cold out, maybe a little bit less. So I turn, in turn, I tend to carry six batteries with me. And in a full day of shooting, I might go through maybe three of those batteries. But if it's cold out, I might go through four or five of them. And I keep them in a pouch, you know, close to my body uh, on the inside of my jacket. And then I just switch it out as, uh, as needed. I use a Really Right Stuff bracket, L bracket, for this camera. And for all my cameras, actually, but for, for, um, for this camera. The problem is it blocks the battery change door. And as a result, you have to go through a little bit of a hassle opening this, this uh, L bracket up. There is a slide that allows you to do that, but you have to open it up, uh, slide it out of the way, open up the battery door, change it, push back the L bracket and tighten it. Uh, a, little bit, a bit of an inconvenience, but it's like anything else. With practice, you get better at it, more efficient, very, it's very quick. So I, I don't look at that as much as a problem as I did, but it still is something that I, that I, I and I'm not sure how one would improve that, but it is something that I, a feature I don't like about the um, Fuji GFX-S. The, um, the last thing that I, it's, I can't really say if it's a problem or something I don't like, but I do wish that Fuji would come out with a, with a tilt shift lens for this GFX system. When I used to shoot Hasselblad Digital, uh, the, the, uh, I, I used their tilt shift adapter, which had big knobs on it. It, it was easy to use. You could take virtually any uh, Hasselblad Hasse lens that fit onto my, my uh, H4D, and you, would, you could use it as a tilt shift. So I do miss that. I like to do tilt shift photography, uh, especially with landscapes when I have a a, f a foreground object and some medium distance and far distance uh, uh, subjects in, in, in the frame. So I miss that. But of course, nowadays, a lot of people use focus stacking, so it may not be as much of a, of, of a problem, but I, I do like the quality of tilt shift lenses. And uh, in, in fact, this, uh, this image, you can see part of it behind me, was taken with a tilt shift lens uh, in the Canadian Rockies, and it's uh, a lens that a lot of my um, uh, people who buy my prints really like. Uh, again, uh, uh, that's, that would be on my wish list for the uh, Fuji GFX-S. So, we've talked about the positives in the Fuji, we've talked about the negatives uh, in, the, in the Fuji. Let me get to the last, the final thing uh, to talk about here, and that is of obviously the price. It, this is not a cheap system. We're talking about the body alone is about six thousand uh, dollars. You know that that's a lot of money, but think about it. We're seeing Canons and Nikon's uh, going for five thousand dollars and more nowadays. If you're the kind of photographer who values uh, the the sweet look of of, of medium format, uh, the the tonal gradations, the color gradations in in the files then 
you have to think about is that extra thousand, fifteen hundred dollars really uh, worth it to me? And in my case, of course, since I do this professionally, it was a no-brainer. And I'm so glad I stepped up to the, uh, to the Fuji. Uh, the lenses are not cheap either. Uh, for any of these lenses, you're talking about three to four thousand dollars. So it, it is quite the investment. But if, as I said at the beginning, if you're a serious amateur, if you are a professional photographer, I would, I would seriously give this um, camera uh, a, a, a look and would love to get your comments uh, it, right down below here in the YouTube video. Thank you for listening. I appreciate that. And uh, please, if you'd like to like the video or to uh, subscribe to my channel, please do so.